Everybody needs a little help sometimes. No one stands alone. Makes no difference if you're just a child like me or a king upon the throne. For there are no exceptions. We all stand in the line. Everybody needs a friend. Let me tell you of mine. He's my forever friend. My leave me never friend. From darkest night to rainbows ending, he's my forever friend. Even when I turn away, he cares for me. His love no one can shake. Even as I walk away, he's by my side with every breath I take. And sometimes I forget him. My halo fails to shine, and sometimes I am not his friend, but he's always mine. He's my forever friend, my leave me never friend. From darkest night to rainbow's end, he's my forever friend. If you still don't know the one I'm talking of, I think it's time you knew. Long ago and far away upon. My friend died for you. So if you'd like to meet him, but don't know what to do, ask my friend into your heart, and he'll be your friend too. He's my forever friend. My leave me never friend. From darkest night to rainbow's end, he's my forever friend. He's my forever friend. Just one little candle can shine through the night, a symbol of faith, a flame that keeps burning, that never stops turning the darkness away. Light a candle to start a new. Let it be like a prayer, and together we'll shine in a moment of time. We can share.
is forgiven for those who are living in love's ray of light. And life is for caring, so never stop sharing your beacon so bright. Light a candle to start a new I'm only human I'm just a man Help me believe in what I could be And all that I am Show me the stairway I have to climb Lord, for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking from you. Just give me the strength to do every day what I have. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. Jesus, you know, if you're looking below, it's worse now than then. They're pushing and shoving and crowding my mind. So for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking from you. Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may be mine. Lord, help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. Lord, help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. Autumn leaves are falling. However, the naked tree still knows how to live. Remind us to remember that you lived and that your life gave us memories never to forget. 
Good afternoon, and on behalf of Ned's daughter, Linda, and all her siblings, and his extended family, thank you for attending here today as we gather in respect to say farewell and indeed celebrate his life. I'd also like to acknowledge those joining us today on live stream. It's important for both you and those of us here to know that you're sharing the afternoon with us, so welcome. Might take a moment to check that your telephones are off or on silent, please. I'd like to open today with the Lord's Prayer. It's in your booklet. Join me if you wish. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Often when dates are written after a person passes, you will get the birth date and in between you'll get a little dash and that is the date of passing, then the date of passing. What matters most of all is the little dash between those years. For in a way, it represents the time they spent alive on earth. And for Ned, that was 85 years. And only those that love and knew them well know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the stuff. What matters is how we lived and loved and how we spend our dash. With Ned, that little dash is not so little after all. It's a span of many years involved in many things. He very much participated in his life. He cared for his family. He loved his profession and he was part of his community. Leonard Charles Bly passed away from heart failure on Tuesday the 16th of April, Yumina Park. Ned, as I will call him from here on in, as was his preferred name, had suffered heart issues, as I'm sure you will know, for a number of years. Linda and the family would like to take a moment to say thank you to the family-based care in Yumina for all their help. Ned was born on Monday the 29th of August 1938 to parents Ada and Charles Bly. He had three sisters, three siblings, sister Peggy and twin brothers Ray and Dave, and they're both deceased. His parents ran a dairy farm in Stoport, and some years later when they sold the farm, Ned bought some land from them and he ran his beloved Shorthorn cattle stud on it. He was a member of the Shorthorn Society and now Linda and Les look after it. Ned attended Natone School, and on leaving school, he helped the family on the farm for some time before securing work with W.S. Townsend, selling farm machinery. Ned unfortunately became sick for quite some time with hepatitis, and he was out of the workforce. On his return, he gained employment with J.R. Stevenson Irrigation, and here he would find his passion for this type of work. I understand he became quite famous after being seen in the J.R. Stevenson advert. People would recognise him and they would say, there's the J.R. Stevenson man, and they would even ask for his autograph, something he was quite proud of. He would remain in that field working for Irrigation Tasmania until he retired at 74, and he made many friends in that industry. Ned was once sent to the mainland to work for a while, he was to see to the irrigation of a famous, let's just say a famous Australian. On arriving at their place, he was shocked to find the bad workmanship that had previously been done. His granddaughter mentioned that Ned was unashamedly opinionated and not afraid to share his thoughts. I would now like to ask his last employer, Mr. Glenn Phillips, up with a tribute for Ned. Glenn. Good afternoon. As we gather to honour the life of Ned, I'm privileged to share some insight of a man that was highly regarded 
by his work colleagues, clientele and greater community. Ned was defined by his unwavering dedication, unyielding integrity and unparalleled irrigation technical skills. Ned was the original guiding force of our design and sales department. He later went on to oversee the introduction of our internal training school, which he took great pride in. He flourished in sharing some of his knowledge with the next fledging group of budding design engineers. His influence extended far beyond the confines of the workplace. Ned was extremely hard working. From the moment he entered the professional workforce, his commitment to his craft was evident to all who had the privilege of working with him and knowing him. Whether tackling complex projects or lending a hand to a colleague, Ned approached every task with a level of determination that inspired those around him. Perhaps what truly set Ned apart was his undeniable ethical compass. Ned was a steadfast example of integrity and honesty. He never hesitated in his commitment to doing what was right, even when focused, faced with difficult choices or tempting shortcuts. He didn't mince words when faced with ignorance or disrespect, addressing issues head on. This honesty, though, sometimes was stark. It was admired and respected from all who knew him. Ned's presence not only felt, were felt in his actions and words, but also in the way he carried himself. I remember distinctly the first time I met Ned. He entered our workplace dressed impeccably. He was in a sports coat, tie and tailored trousers. It was a sight we had rarely encountered before. But it wasn't an isolated instance for Ned. Rather, it was a consistent reflection of the high standards and attention to detail. Ned's love of flowers, especially Lilliam's, was a well-known aspect of his character. The joy and satisfaction he derived from growing and nurturing them was undeniable. This was evident with the weekly deliveries by Helen or Kim of fresh flowers at our workplace, which Ned had prepared, prepared and prided himself on. His generosity was undeniable and he took great pleasure in sharing the beauty of his creations with everyone around him. I recall a moment when Ned's careful demeanour was put into question and put to the test. I received a phone call from him, his voice trembling with shock and frustration. He recounted the incident where despite pulling off the road to take a phone call, shortly after stopping, there was a large explosive sound. His driver's side mirror was completely gone. A semi-trailer truck had hit it, taking it completely off. When I questioned and jokingly suggested to Ned that he may have not gotten off the road far enough to avoid the incident, his frustration grew and in no uncertain terms he certainly let me know that it was definitely the truck's fault. We have all been privileged in some way to have enjoyed Ned's presence through work, cricket and rabbit trapping stories his love of flowers and the occasional rendition of The Rose by Bette Midler. In closing, Ned was more than a colleague or a friend, he was a revered gentleman. Rest in peace, Ned, you will be dearly missed. Thank you, Glenn. Now, Leonard, Ned, was a very good dancer. He loved his ballroom dancing. His granddaughter, Alisa, remembers going to some dances with her pop and learning to dance. However, she says it turned out she's not a great dancer, but Ned was a great leader and helped her immensely. And that has left Alisa with some fond memories of him and his dancing. And I'm sure some of you may know of his dancing as well. Quite amazing that Ned could dance because after years of a hip issue, it was found that his hip joint was practically non-existent. He never really had had a proper one and his bone had forged its own, but dance he did. He was at a dance many years back. He would meet his wife-to-be, Glenda, 
and we go on to have five children, Linda, Stephen, Colin, Tracy, and Jerome. And then along came seven grandchildren and two great-grandchildren over the years. As Ned progressed through life, some of his passions remained with him, such as his cricket, as we just heard. He played alongside family and the team at Stoport, and indeed, he was a life member of the Stoport Cricket Club. He played for Somerset for a while, and also a little indoor cricket. He was an avid watcher of cricket on television, as he was with his AFL. His team was Hawthorne. He would have been pleased about the weekend. And lo and behold, anyone that spoke a word when the game was on television. He was very vocal watching his footy, apparently. Ned also had a passion for Tasmania. And at work one day, a visiting mainlander who had been working with Ned that day said to him, when he finished work at the end of the week, he was going to take a day off to look around Tasmania. Ned thought that was hilarious. <laughs> I, I have heard that he had a great sense of humour and I would have liked to have been a fly on the wall and to come back for that one. After work, his cattle and sport, never sitting still, he took to his breeding of his lilliums. His skills, something that actually something became a little bit of an obsession with him. And he was, of course, a member of the Lilium Society. I will now ask Neil Jordan up with a tribute for Ned. Thanks very much. Most, many of you would know Ned through his sporting endeavours, others as an irrigation specialist. And uh, character-wise, I'd have to endorse everything that Glenn said. Whatever the connection, you would be aware that Ned never did anything by halves. If Ned was in there, it was fairly full on. Growing and breeding lilliums, pardon me, was yet another passion for Ned. His particular focus was trumpet lilies. These were mostly developed at Oregon gold farms in a massive enterprise in the middle of last century. Ned was a member of the Northwest Tasmanian Lilium Society for around 30 years. He was our president for five of those, vice president for another 10, and a strong contributor throughout. Trumpet lilies are large, colourful and highly perfumed. Ned saw that they were in need of some further development. Most stems were tall with a ring of flowers on the top. Ned understood that if the flowers occupied a larger part of the stem, they would look much better. And so he set about selecting and making crosses until he had, had what he thought were pretty good lilies. And so they were. At the peak of Ned's lily breeding activities, they were arguably the best trumpet hybrid lilies in the world. Ned also produced large quantities of lily bulbs, which he sold at very reasonable prices through the Society's annual bulb sales, as well as copious quantities of seed for all those who wanted to try their hand with that. He was also an excellent Lilium judge until recent years when, much to Ned's consternation, his memory let him down. Ned's presence at our annual shows has been sadly missed these past few years. We sincerely thank Ned for his dedication and service. Rest in peace, Ned. Thank you. Thank you very much, Neil. Very skilled with his lilliums. He also had his own lilium called the Heart Starter, and it's now a painting of this in the Hobart Heart Ward. Not only did he tend his lilliums, he volunteered at the Rhododendron Gardens. He grew fantastic veggies and flowers at home, and every week attended his Bernie Men's Coffee Group on a Wednesday morning and that was a gathering he did not like to miss. Ned did like to be social, and that certainly would have kept him active. 
His daughter Linda would like to say a huge thank you to Ned's next door neighbours, Mel, Matthew, Lucy and Sophie, who were like a second family to him, always making sure he was up and about each day, checking on him and visiting with him. It was, a spe it was special for you all to take that time for him, and I'm sure it was much appreciated by him as well as the family. Linda said her dad was strict, outspoken, funny but supportive, and a provider. Every Saturday, when young, Ned would take the kids up the farm, and they'd spend the day there before going home again. He helped Linda out a lot as a non-driver. At one time, as a single mum, he'd run her two appointments and do her shopping. I'd like to read a poem chosen by the family that reflects Ned's life on the land and his love of nature and the trees. My time here on earth is now done, all the noise and the clamour, the joy. The powerful life force that drove me onwards has slipped away into the quiet of eternity. I am at peace. From now on, I will dance through your memories, threading thoughts of love through your heart. The pain of loss will gradually ease and the sadness will lift. The days will be lighter and the nights not so long, for I am still here. When you walk through this place, you will feel me in the gentle touch of the breeze on your face, in the sunlight dappled forest floor, in the murmur of the branches high above. Here, under the sky of my birth, I have now found my resting place. I have come home. When I am down And oh, my soul so weary when troubles come and my heart burden be, and I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me. You raise me. Stand on mountains You raise me up To walk on stormy seas I am strong When I am on your shoulders You raise me up To more than I can be
You raise me up to more than I can. Some beautiful, precious memories. Just to let you know that we are taking Ned across the way back to the earth that he so loved. So if you would like to attend the graveside, please do. For those of you who are unable to do so, we are having refreshments back here and you welcome everyone to join the family after the service and cross in the cemetery. I'd also like to let you know that as we prepare to take him on his final journey, there will be slides run here, one here, of Ned's Lilliams. Please stand. Some say love, it is a river that drowns the tender reed. Some say love, it is a razor that leaves your soul to bleed. Some say Oh 